Yeah. Guys, uh, in today's episode, we've got another massive five games in the championship. In the first game of the episode, we start against Reading at home at Craven Cottage. And as you can see, the team on your screen, we've got a few players dropping to the bench this game, like Harrison Reed and Harry Wilson. And uh, due to the games coming so thick and fast in the championship, Tanganga's coming in at right back and Mawson's coming at centre back. Then we've got Seri, Chalaber uh, as a holder fielder, Cavallero on the left. And they are the changes for the team. So in the first game, Reading get a chance in the third minute. They manage to keep the ball in. Somehow, Morrison keeps it in. Then Laurent gets the ball, plays it to Ejaria, plays it back to Josh Laurent, and he scores an absolutely fantastic goal against Gazaniga. There's no stopping that from Argentinian goalkeeper. I mean, I, sometimes I think Gazaniga could save some of the shots he concedes, but, I mean, there's no saving that. And Reading take the very early lead with Josh Laurent doing very well to keep that move alive. And uh, then again in the 22nd minute, they get another chance. Alan Halalovic plays it to Yadion. I don't think I pronounced that right. And Andy Rinamotta has another effort, but Gazaniga this time is forced into a wonderful save. And it's been very disappointing so far because Reading just keep peppering the goal. And when the AI literally wants to shoot, they will always get a shot away. And it's Yadim and Halalovic uh, creating difficulties for our defence again. And Miete crosses the ball. And uh, Gazaniga eventually uh, comes out and collects the ball. It's a very disappointing first half from the boys. And from the corner in the 59th minute, we try and find Mitrovic. And Seri picks up the ball for our first real chance of the game. And Mela picks up the ball and absolutely thumps one into the bottom corner against the Reading goalkeeper. And with the five-star, five-star combo of Mela, I don't think there's many better youth players on this game at the moment. But that brings us back into the game. And uh, as you can see, in the 73rd minute, Reading get another chance. It's Laurent again. Plays it to Rinamotta. And I'm not sure what their formation was before the start of this game. But it seems like Rinamotta and Laurent felt like strikers this game. They literally had so many chances between them. And they just kept creating space. Like, look at that. Every single pass seems like. Every gap. The double tap pass and it made it through. But it was disappointing nonetheless. And then we get another chance with Aradebeo losing out on the header. Christie plays it back out and Deckard over Reed plays it to Ricky J. Jones, who thumps one again into the top corner of the goal. And 87 minutes gone. You wouldn't put it past us to score another. But I mean, that is a fantastic finish from Ricky J. Jones. As you can see, the fans are going wild. That is the exact same fan, just to say, that is the exact same fan celebrating. They must be twins, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Ricky J. Jones gets us back into the game. And then in the, in the last minute of additional time, Reading are on the attack and the ball gets crossed in and Hoyler, or is it Renamata, misses an absolute sitter against Gazaniga. It's a very good cross from whichever one crossed there and he should have scored. I don't think Gazaniga was anywhere near that, but we've got to let off the, look, uh, the hook a little bit there. And uh, it's not a bad result of the cottage, but we do want a bit better results if we're going to be challenging for the title this season or at least the playoffs. As, as, as you can see, the press conference just sort of confirms that as it wasn't a bad result against a decent Reading team, because they have got a lot of good players, but it's a very ageing team. And they've got a lot of players who are towards the end of their careers or at least the late peaks of their careers. So we need to be beating teams like that. But we go straight away into another game. And now we've got Bristol City at Ashton Gate. I believe it's called the Stad Municipal, but I mean, it's Ashton Gate really. At I'm not sure why EA haven't managed to get the rights to all the championship stadiums since like to do championship career modes but I guess they're not bothered they're more bothered about ultimate team but the team on your screen a few players have come back in like Harrison Reed, Harry Wilson's come in Kearney's come in and uh, Dembele's come back in the holding with Tanganga going back at centre back and Tete is the right back Mitrovic is still the top, top scorer in the league but as we see the look is just not with us at the moment like conceding a goal like that is just it's very very disheartening to play against Naki Wells is a good player in real life but look at that I think Gazaniga should have done a lot better with that it's very disappointing and frustrating to concede that but then we have Da Silva playing the ball into Williams and James picks up the ball plays it to Martin and then Wells scores again I mean this one again from Gazaniga if we do get promoted I'm just thinking that we will need a new goalkeeper to replace him because he's a decent goalkeeper but I'm either going to play, drop him for Rodak at some point or buy a proper Premier League goalkeeper because I think proper Premier League goalkeepers win us games or at least gain us points. 
as you can see with that one, their keeper had no chance of that either. Mitrovic with a good finish. I couldn't, I tried to pick up the ball to be honest, but for some reason past like, unless it's like the 55th minute, the game doesn't let you pick up the ball, which is quite weird. But I mean, it's, it's FIFA. I'm not expecting it to be super realistic, but it gets us back into the game at least. And uh, we've got a lot of work to do to get back into the game. But Mitrovic again causing problems in the 76th minute. Plays it to Harry Wilson, who turns the game on its head and makes it 2 2. As you can see him celebrating, it's a good goal. It's a good finish from Wilson. And uh, we do we do like to get back in games, especially away games. And uh, it's just nice to see the boys not letting everything everything go in the game. But luck doesn't really happen for us. And as you can see, Tete misses the ball. And Semenyo, I don't know how he scored that again. I've got to, I've got to admit, Gazzaniga's having proper problems saving shots through these games. I know I don't show all the highlights and... He does make some more right saves, but three goals that game, I feel like a better goalkeeper would have probably saved. But I mean, that's a disappointing result against uh, Bristol City at Ashton Gate. But there's just not a lot we can do. And we decided to sell Anthony Knockhart. We've got an offer for Hector as well, but Anthony Knockhart, he's not going to get anywhere near the team this year because we don't play with wingers. We play with wide attacking midfielders. And there's no need for him in the team anymore because we've got enough attacking midfielders for the team. But without further ado... We do go into the third game, the second one at the Cottage. And it's another very big game in the Championship where we are playing Swansea City, who are around where we are in the league. They're towards mid-table promotion places. It's going to be a very hard game again. But Ricky J. Jones in the 15th minute goes through on goal. He scores again. Honestly, Ricky J. Jones, is every game he plays, he tends to score. So it's quite nice to see that players we've bought are actually doing something for the team. And he gets another goal for the club. And it puts in a good position against a very good Swansea side. I mean, every club in the Championship on this, basically, apart from a few teams, they can they can hurt us like they just have to make it 1-1. And especially on the AI being legendary, honestly, like it's so difficult to defend this FIFA, as my club, if any, puts them 1-1. But there's not a lot we can do. And in the 92nd minute, that's the next chance of this game because they defended that well. Managed to scoop the ball out and scrape a draw because honestly, in that second half, it was just the AI retaining the ball. And there's nothing I can do against the AI retaining the ball. It's very frustrating when it happens, but sometimes you can't help it. And I'd like more options in the press conference because I would be very like, it's difficult to say what emotions I'm feeling, but it's disappointing when you can't get the ball off the team. So they were playing like Prime Barcelona when they're 5 0 up, and we just couldn't get the ball off them. And it's really disappointing and disheartening when you're trying to do a series and trying to enjoy the game that every team you play against seems to retain the ball so well, even if they've got 55 rated in midfield or 95 rated in midfield. So there's nothing you can do with it, really. But as I said, it's not the best result. But like going into a team like Coventry as well, Coventry are below us in the league again. And the retention of the ball they have in this game is just so insane. And again, a team like Coventry again, I think they got promoted last season. We are at the Coventry Building Arena, or that's what it should be called, not Malton Road uh, Building Society Arena. But this is our another game where we've had to make changes because the games come like every couple of games. Uh, well, a couple of days, sorry. And it's very difficult to beat teams. And as you can see, we're sixth in the league at the moment and they're eighth in the league. They're also vying for a playoff place like us. And it's also another difficult team because, as I said, I think they got promoted last season, so it's just a difficult game to go into. But, as you can see, the team again, it pretty much stays the same. But Alfie Mawson retains his place in the squad. We have to bring in Congolo to play as a uh, left centre-back and drop Zambuanguisa a bit further back. And then Deco Reed is the attack, central attacking midfielder. But they get the first chance of the game in the 26th minute. And they score. Like, Gazaniga again at his front post. I'm not sure what he does for this. I think it hits him in the head, but it's just disappointing because the shots I can't do anything about. Like, we haven't had a clean sheet this season for a reason. I think if we play a bit more of Rodak, who I know a lot of Fulham fans do like Rodak, especially from the team when they got promoted the other year, it'd be nice to see him do something in the team rather than just get relegated to the bench all the time. And then right towards the end of the half, Harry Wilson really should score, but I think he takes it on his, I think he took it on his right foot, and it's, it's just unfortunate. But, I mean, it's difficult to create chances. That was the only chance we created this half. And I'm not great at FIFA, but it's just so difficult to break down the AI this year, more than I've ever felt it has been before. 
which is why this episode is so just difficult in general because every team retained the ball so well compared to what they did the episode before and we won quite a few games and Gazaniga has an absolute shocker again I don't know what he's doing for any of the goals he goes the wrong way and completely misses the ball and I'm not sure what I'm meant to do to defend Callum O'Hare there who had a really good game this game but we finally do get a chance in the 83rd minute and honestly it's a good finish from Mello the youngster it's just so disappointing that we can't do anything sometimes to defend a goal whereas other FIFAs if you did something right you'd get rewarded for it especially offline not not necessarily online but like this I tried to play a um, not well I tried to play a overload ball side but I pressed the wrong button so my defence pushed up and they scored because I offside trapped their defence even though there was no need to offside trap them so there were no saving that from Gazaniga, but they score in the last minute and it's just so disappointing for us to lose against Coventry. I know they're just below us in the league, but a super disappointing result. And in this press conference, I really go into the players for it. So I just think, why have we like took a step back with this episode? Why has the defence suddenly become like, we were never good, but like as you can see, I start kicking off in the press conference completely because nothing good happened. Not about O'Hare playing well. We literally did make him play good, but I didn't want to say that because it would have damaged the team's morale even more than it already was. So, because we were so poor in the first four, I thought, oh, maybe we could turn it round and go to Crave Cottage and beat QPR because our team is so much better. I'm just not too sure why Tanganga is the captain, the default captain at the moment. I would think Dembele or Zamba would be the captain or Mitrovic. The three people I have over him as captain, so... I'm not sure why, but we'll, we'll leave it for this game. I'm not changing it in game. So, uh, usual lineup, really, that. And it uh, doesn't take long. Well, to be fair, it takes 40 minutes to have a first chance of the game. Wilson runs down the line, crosses it to Mella, and he absolutely fires one past the goalkeeper. Mella has been much better than Kearney so far this season. It upsets me to say, because I like Kearney. I think he's a very good player. But, I mean, it's a good, good ball from Wilson, but Mella scored his second or third goal of the season, I believe. There's no saving that. Look at that. It's unstoppable, really. And then again in the 55th minute, we try and cross the ball to Mitrovic, and he scores again. If this man is not the best head of the ball in the Championship or, or the Premier League, or even in, uh, the entire world, I'm not sure who is. I've never seen him lose a header on this game. Then in the 60th minute, Prince has the ball for QPR, plays it to Gray, and we concede. And Gazaniga can't really save that. Um, for QPR, I'm not actually sure if Prince is... Instead, they're doing that thing last year where they're going to make Kyan Prince the a player in career mode. So I think that might be it. I'm not sure if they have a player called Prince. Correct me if I'm wrong, they might do. But at the end of the game, the 92nd minute, Austin gets played the ball. And Gazaniga again. Honestly, where has this man gone? He's a shadow of what he was when he played for Tottenham. I know he was a cup keeper at Tottenham, but he's not been good this season. He had a few decent games to start for when we were winning, winning in the league, but now he's just just gone downhill. And I thought that was a foul on Mitrovic, to be honest, but I'm more annoyed at Gazaniga. He's had another stinker of a game. It's just not what we want. It's not what we want to see from him, but oh, what are you going to do? I think in the next episode, I'll start playing Rodak as a goalkeeper because Gazaniga, look at the expected goals, 0.9 to 3. We should have won that game, absolutely battered them. But Gazaniga again, he has another bad bad game. And I think three or four bad games out, out of five, I don't think he deserves the number one spot anymore. So uh, after that, we, it's a disappointing episode this, I'm not going to lie. Was that two draws and three defeats? Puts us to eighth in the league after we're third. We've not done very well this episode. It's been a real shame, but I'm hoping next episode I can turn it around a little bit. The team's really tired at the moment. We need a bit of a rest. I think we need an international break. For the next games, we've got uh, Cardiff at home. We've got Forest away. We've got West Bromwich Albion at home. And then the final game of the episode next time, we've got Blackburn away. But thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.